Hello guys, what's up? I hope you're all having a lovely morning. I've been up super early because I'm excited because as you can see in the uh, title by now, me and Lee are making the trip to Chernobyl tonight. Um, we're travelling to Gatwick Airport. We're going to be leaving around 4 o'clock to get there for 8 because our flight is at 11. We're going to get to Ukraine at about 4 in the morning. We then have a 2 hour wait but we'll probably chill in McDonald's and do some other things, you know, maybe some photography because, gotta be said, Ukraine looks stunning. So, um, me and Leah are super excited for the trip. We're finally traveling to Chernobyl. It's literally a dream come true, and well, I get a ticket off the list finally. Um, we're literally going for a day. We're going to be traveling home Wednesday night. Today is Tuesday, obviously, and we're going to be so knackered, but. This journey is going to be well worth it. And remember guys, to comment, rate and subscribe. Because this video is going to be separate to my actual footage in, well, Pripyat and Chernobyl. So this is going to be a separate vlog. So make sure you subscribe to uh, see the next video. And yeah guys, I'm out. See you in a bit in the airport maybe. What's up guys? So um, we're in Gatwick right now in London. Um, we've been here about an hour, haven't we? Oh yeah. And we've basically just had all food and our sort of crap and um, we'll be flying in about an hour, I want to say. Well, we've bought the plane in an hour and then uh, flights do take off at about 11 o'clock. So. so we both can't wait. The stressful part is well, it's over the now. now. Yeah, and it's just the waiting game. We're going to land in Ukraine for about four o'clock their time and uh, we have a two hour wait then which is going to be a killer but they drop us off by McDonald's which <laughs> is quite good no, that's good enough for good <laughs> and then obviously the city centre which I was on about earlier has some beautiful statues and that me and Leo most likely take some photos yeah, of yeah from like the Soviet era and so yeah it'd be interesting so I guess yeah I'll get some footage there guys um See you in Ukraine, or possibly on the plane. Right then, guys, so we just landed in Chernobyl, and uh, yeah, here we go. Yeah. Right, um, I'm Kurt. Hi. Right. And I'm Lee. Hi. Yes. <laughs> Looking forward to the trip off. Yeah. So, um, how long is it now to the city? Like the travelling? Oh, around 40 minutes. 40 minutes, yeah, that's alright. So, as you can see, guys, we just met the uh, guides and uh, we got you safe, so I'll see you a bit later on. Well, what's up, guys? Um, we're finally in Kev. As you can see, it's still dark. It's six o'clock, obviously, Ukraine time. Um, we got two hours to wait for the bus. We don't think nothing's open at the minute, so we are currently at the East uh, Solo East Travels um, headquarters, which is quite nice of them. Larry's chilling here because. Well, we've got two hours and nothing's open, hopefully me and Lee will go and see in a bit if a McDonald's or something is open because I'm starving, but um, what I've got out of the tour guide is it's a, about a two hour drive, I think he said, from Kev to Chernobyl, so that's our sleep time because me and Lee's literally running off maybe a hour's sleep so far, so really not good, but it's going to be worth it guys because obviously it's a once in a lifetime opportunity so I will catch you guys in a bit. We're just having a wander and we just seen a uh, fallout. Yeah. Uh, pit boy, pipe boy. Pit boy. So I'm just going to guess um, at Lee's thoughts, I've already said mine. Obviously I said we were tired. Yeah. Um, it's cold, it's typical Eastern Europe um, but the, the guy said in there it's not usually like this in October, it's usually this cold in December time. It's just all that really. We are in Kiev, we done it. We had a lovely welcome, didn't we, by uh, seeing a car on his side. So, yeah. you know, that was a lovely welcome, but this is the dark city and where the famous food we come from we eat today, which is 
chicken Kiev. I gotta be honest though, on Google it looked like a stunning city. We ain't gonna go much time to explore, no, are we? Because no, we're gonna be late until about seven o'clock, and uh, we've just been told that we gotta go. Well, we will start picking up at about quarter past seven. So, fuck <laughs> me. <laughs> it's a bit chilly, Fox. Let's just say that. Oh, I should warm up. Be uh, right, they're calling the right map. All in my head. Mackie D's was like there somewhere, but we ain't gonna have enough time anyway. No, there's Mackie D's here, see the. Oh, yeah. Right, we've got 30 seconds till we cross. Oh, that's cool. I never <laughs> noticed that. Oh, I tell you why, it's so weird with it being on the wrong side of the road, the cars. Obviously, they drive on the left here. We're yeah. Used, we're used to right, so... Exactly. It's a bit weird, and, like, obviously all the cars are different, and, well, it's just a totally different place, isn't it? Uh, different culture. The UK. They only give you 20 seconds to <laughs> cross. I know, uh, that, that was cramped, guys. It was just rammed. You should have seen that. We literally got off the um, airplane and it was just a tram. And it, yeah. Well, it said maximum of 43 people. It must have been around 60 on there. <laughs> and then they literally just rammed this woman on in a wheelchair. And it's like, ow, that was my leg. But yeah, um, I'm so excited to just see Chernobyl now. And um, I'm not thinking about it yet, but I think I'll be happy to see my bed <laughs> around about 12 o'clock yeah. tonight. Uh, yeah, which is about 16 hours away. Oh. It's worth it though, guys. It's going to be worth it. So worth it. And that ain't McDonald's, is it? I think we got it wrong. Is it McDonald's, yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, that one, yeah. I looked at that bloody thing, look. How do you are, sir? I'll leave the video there, guys. Um, I'll probably update you on the bus because apparently it's a two hour drive. Oh, hang on, before we go, let's get some close ups of, uh, well, not a close up, but let's get some footage of this. not weather uh, but it's necessary to wear long sleeves long pants uh, uh, today uh, you have uh, proper clothes but uh, in summer it can be a problem that's why this option is included into these rules uh, then we have to uh, move around only according to the prescribed rules it means so that uh, we are allowed to go only to the places which are included into this official paper uh, so here we can see the remains of the cattle breeding farm if you look to the right uh, you'll see them this was a collective farm which was the main source of work and food for all the inhabitants of this village Soviets used to have uh, collective farming instead of individual farming uh, so we'll see some collective farms uh, on the way in the abandoned villages mess There are a lot of locals and uh, not all of them come here for real commemoration Some of them come here to drink vodka and to make a mess Sad but true uh, But many of them come to lay flowers at the memorials we can see many uh, plastic flowers at the memorials and uh, near the World War II monuments and is the same with cemeteries and 
said this day the 9th of May is a very special day for tourism it's a nightmare for tourists and it's even a greater nightmare for tour guides but now it's different it's different uh, we'll try to avoid other groups and uh, we are on the way to Chernobyl uh, Chernobyl, the administrative center of the exclusion zone, uh, was a, not a very large town. Uh, 14,000 people used to live there, but it's very old, more than 800 uh, uh, years old. And I promised to show you the water supply system. Look at the pipes above the road, they are with water. And here we'll make a stop near a stone sign welcoming us to Chernobyl with the word Chernobyl and symbols of the river port of the... So, me and Leah are finally in the zone. And, as you can guess, it's snowing. <laughs> and Ukraine is not an exception. All the citizens of Ukraine can get married in Chernobyl and uh, this church was built in 19th century uh, when uh, there was the best time for the architecture of the Russian Empire Ukraine was part of oh. Russian Empire at this period and uh, the best houses and churches were built at the end of the 19th century and in the beginning of the 20th century Now I'll have to go to the office just for a minute. Wait for me, please. Paperwork is always necessary. All the exclusion zone is a go under governmental control. Here it is, St. Elia Church. A very typical architecture of Russian Empire of the end of the 19th century. We can enter the churchyard, but please don't ring the bells. Uh, in front of us we can see a church museum. I have never seen it open, so I don't know what is inside. And uh, uh, the workers of the church uh, asked uh, us to be quiet in the yard, please. I'll answer the question firstly. Guys, um, we're in Chernobyl and we've just stopped to see a church museum and some stunning architectural uh, church which is absolutely amazing. It's absolutely stunning guys, it's, it's all surreal to here, finally. I'm just going to take some more photos now guys. So I'll just show you some more in a bit. Here we go guys, I'm just going to have a close-up of the church here. It's stunning guys, absolutely stunning. Never seen anything like that. Absolutely stunning guys. In Chernobyl we'll see uh, one more place, uh, the memorial dedicated to abandoned villages and towns of the exclusion zone, but before we'll make a short photo stop near the uh, monument of Lenin, uh, one of a few Lenins remaining in Ukraine. Uh, because after the revolution that happened two years ago, very few monuments uh, of uh, this uh, communist leader remain in the uh, in the country uh, please take everything you need uh, the bus will wait for us in another place we'll be walking probably wouldn't see dogs but well there's two or we wouldn't see animals and there's a statue but yeah to be able to see the dogs it's a wonderful sight isn't it Lee they said we wouldn't see animals and what have we seen is unreal you guys is such such a weird feeling to it all. 
it's incredible. I mean, it even started snowing for us, which looked like it was going to be bad, but it haven't ruined it, I don't think. I thought it was going to, but oh well, to just add some atmosphere to the place. Even more atmosphere than it already has got. You'd be surprised as well, guys. I thought it was going to be freezing. It's colder in the bus than it is outside. So guys, these are the places that were left abandoned. It's a uh, very surreal guys actually been here. Look at our statue Lee at the uh, bull. Oh, you've already noticed it. Continuing on with the signs guys because I got distracted by a pretty cool statue. As you can see there was a lot of cities that had to be abandoned due to the disaster. I can't remember how many or towns, I mean, not cities, and um, there was loads. How many did she say, Lee, or can you remember? No, I can't remember off the top of my head, really. I wonder why these ones are black. Oh, right, so they're no longer abandoned, that's cool. And there's memorials on some of them, but like flowers. It means that life, I don't know if this is in a radiation school back there. So. Alright. Uh, schools and kindergartens, and. Uh, and except nightlife, there is a curfew after 10 pm, people have to stay at home. Now we. Uh, we'll make a short stop just to take pictures from the uh, bus near the monument. Uh, please look to the right. Uh, the monument efforts in stopping this uh, strange radioactive fire with water were in vain. The reactor became even uh, hotter beca because uh, water only could heat the reactor, the burning reactor and temperature there was more than 3000 degrees celsius of course uh, this unusual fire could not be stopped with water and tons of lead were dropped into the reactor and uh, it took two weeks to stop fire there uh, now we are leaving Chernobyl and uh, we are heading to the checkpoint of the 10 km exclusion zone. It's situated in Lelif village. Lelif is uh, one of the villages where wooden house... So guys, brought the woodpecker. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to go on there because of today's weather. But, yeah. but it's looming up with the mist. It's, li it's literally gone way too quick, hasn't it? Oh, it has, yeah. It's gone by. And I mean, it's the travelling that have seemed to have took the longest being, yeah? It's like nothing. That's quite <laughs> cool, actually. It's just a jeep and he's lost his uh, wheels and everything. Here it is, looming in the distance. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Yeah. Trip. 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 <sighs> What's happening guys? So we're actually at one of the main things I wanted to see, the woodpeckers. Which is gigantic. Okay <laughs> now. Aye. Imagine our cow out of nowhere off here. Just land in the snow like. But the snow has literally got no better guys. No better at all.
uh, also here the remains of the cattle breeding farm uh, are still on the left side of the road and uh, a kindergarten here in Kopachi we can see that uh, the radiation background is 0 0.23 microsavert but there is a hot spot here a small place where radiation is higher than normal Uh, if we have time, we'll stop. This had to be a cooling system for reactors 5 and 6. The cooling tower, which is larger, had to, uh, to be two times higher. The construction of the cooling towers, as well as the reactors 5 and 6, was abandoned uh, right after the explosion. Soviets uh, first wanted to... Um, finish the fifth reactor with which was 80% uh, over but uh, uh, they could not use it again uh, because uh, uh, of the danger of radiation exposure so the construction of both reactors were was abandoned in 1987 after the cleanup reactors 1 2 and 3 started operating again but now they are stopped and all the, the spent fuel will be placed in a special storage look to the left please you can see uh, a building which is under construction now uh, it's a new storage for spent nuclear fuel uh, all the spent fuel from the unworking reactors will be there when it's over it will be the next year we hope because there were delays with it if you look to the right on the opposite side of the cooling channel you'll see a building with tower cranes near it is the unfinished reactor number five all the cranes are in the same position as they were in 1986 and uh, this place is very dangerous because if you walk there something can fall on your head that's why tourists are not allowed to go there away from here out of the exclusion zone and they have to take a special train to come from this town from Slovutich to the exclusion zone then they take the buses uh, that take them to the nuclear power plant in front of us uh, a low building in front of us is the main building of the nuclear power plant and bad news we are not allowed to take pictures of the power plant from the bus here so please uh, here don't take pictures but good news uh, well we are allowed to take pictures in another place we'll stop there and uh, near the fourth reactor uh, so uh, here on the left side of the road you can see two black boxes with white pipes in front of them Despite is draining now. Um, this uh, cooling lake was the main part of the cooling system of the fourth reactor and uh, the uh, three more reactors, reactors one, two, and three. Uh, and there was a fish farm there. Um, and all the cooling pond and all the cooling channels are full of fish because fishing is not allowed there here again we can see black boxes such black boxes with a large chimney near them reactors one and two closer to us is one then two and then look to the right please another fire station first victims of chernobyl 27 firefighters came from this very fire station to extinguish fire at the power plant and uh, now we can see the reactors three which is closer to us and four uh, uh, which is closer to the new safe confinement this large silver dome structure 
it's ready only the remote control machines has they have to be placed inside and there is another building here and uh, a building which looks very very bad it's an old storage for spent nuclear fuel uh, to the left look to the left please uh, this uh, building is nicknamed wet storage and uh, all the spent fuel has to be replaced from it uh, into the new one so we are currently by reactor number four the most famous one if you ask me it's the one that actually uh, caused this disaster and that's what's going to be going over it in well apparently one or two months time which will seal up it and co cause even well it will stop even more radiation coming out of the place Lee. Right then guys, we're at nuclear reactor 4, the one that actually caused the disaster um, all them years ago, 30 years ago I think. Basically the tall guy said to us on the bus that it's in November or December that yeah. this is going to be going over it to basically cover it so it'll stop um, less radiation obviously coming into the city and that's what they want to make it more uh, livable I suppose and apparently that's the world's biggest uh, moving building so yeah it's very cold <laughs> it is freezing so that's well nuclear reactor folder and the most well if you ask me the most famous part in uh the old city so i'll see you at the where we go next uh welcome to pripyat sign and now we've got to get back on the bus but yeah that's the pripyat sign <laughs> Between the Red Forest and the Ghost Town, uh, there is a bridge. We have to cross this bridge and it's nicknamed Bridge of Death. Uh, because according to the legend, uh, uh, people who lived in Pripyat were curious about what happened at the power plant, came to this very bridge, got very high doses of radiation and all of them died, including children. But personally, I know uh, several people who were standing on this bridge uh, when they were children. This very day, the 26th of April, they are still alive, they work, they are not disabled. Even uh, one of them, uh, two of them have metabolic changes and uh, two of them have cataract. Uh, but they are still alive. Uh, so it was just a legend. We'll never know the Inki not to be uh, as contaminated as the Red Forest, but it was impossible to clean this town. It was cheaper to build a new one. And it was done. Slavutic was built out of the zone for the workers of the power plant. And so uh, people were evacuated on the 36 hours after the disaster. Um, and uh, all the people of the zone were evacuated even later. Some of them were evacuated in the middle of May. Uh, but in Pripyat, people were evacuated 36 hours after the explosion. And as Pripyat is only three kilometers away from the power plant, you can imagine the levels of radiation in the town. But what Soviets did when they uh, measured radiation in Pripyat. First of all, they opened the amusement park before the official opening uh, to keep people in the town, to prevent them from going closer to the power plant. Uh, the buses uh, arrived uh, to Pripyat at 9 p.m. the 26th of April, but people were evacuated at 2 p.m. the 27th of April. 
because nobody wanted to take responsibility for the evacuation. That was the policy of the Soviet Union. And uh, that was the attitude of the Soviet Union to people. Uh, but uh, the attitude was quite good because uh, Soviets had to speak up about this accident. Uh, the Western world knew about it. A high radiation was discovered out of the Soviet Union. So Soviets had to show that they cared about people. All the people who were evacuated from Pripyat and this zone uh, in general were given new places to live. After a couple of years, because uh, at, uh, the government could not uh, give uh, a lot of flats and houses to people uh, right after the accident. Uh, the plan was to evacuate people from Pripyat for three days to clean the town and to send people back. But it was impossible to clean the town and only when the sarcophagus was built people could come back and take the rest of their belongings. If things were not contaminated or could be cleaned, they, people could take them uh, to their new homes. Here is the central square of Pripyat. From here we'll start walking. The bus will wait for us in another place. So we just got so in the middle of Pripyat. Um, all the scientific delegation stayed in this hotel. Uh, and this is literally what I've been waiting for. Um, over there you can see a restaurant with a simple name restaurant. Uh, a supermarket, one of the best in the Soviet Union. Uh, now uh, almost totally empty. And uh, over there we can see a community center, always so-called Palace of Culture. Um, entertainment center with a disco, a theater, a cinema, a gym, everything to spend a free time. We might actually finally get a step into some abandoned buildings, people, which will be at the days if we can. They are really good guys, unreal. This is my favourite part. Ah, oh, wow, the stage. It's our town. Send me a postcard next time. I think Jordan's come with us, what do you think? Oh yeah. <laughs> you get what I'm saying, do you? Yeah. I like you, Lee, you get you know my joke straight away, don't you? Oh. I'm gonna say to him when did he arrive and while playing DK. Ah we've seen him at Gatwood in Fortnite, haven't we? Yeah. Have a dinner. Oh, look at that at me. Someone spray painted a guy walking up the steps. Look, I don't know if the GoPro will get that, but yeah, it will. Oh, so guys, we're in Pripyat. We had my uh, favourite part, we actually got to go in an abandoned building as well, which is pretty good, isn't it, Lee? Yeah. And um, it's still snowing, as you can see. And I am freezing, but I don't even care anymore because we're in my favourite part, so. I see you when, oh my god, <laughs> I was about to say goodbye, but uh, keep going. Look, guys, out of the trees, I might just ejaculate everywhere now. Oh my god, 
Here it is guys, the iconic Ferris wheel. Here it is guys, here it is. Oh my god. The bumper cars. So we're now at the football pitch guys, um, we're getting rushed around a lot so I didn't manage to get footage of the Ferris wheel but Lee did so I just put it in my video because Lee will kindly donate it to the channel but use their uh, football, what do you call them, grandstands is it? been an amazing trip guys, so worth it, but like I said, it's just been too much of a rush man. Ten minutes in one place it is in there and... But I still enjoyed it, I can't say I haven't. Wow. And that's a serious piece of floodlight. It is. I wouldn't want to be a person who had to climb to the top. I'd <laughs> change a <your> bulb. Yeah. <laughs> It's been unreal though, guys, actually getting to visit this place now, isn't it, Lee? Yeah. Like I said, me and Lee's probably going to come back and see if we can try, I don't know, maybe get a private tour or something, so we don't have to rush, innit? Yeah. Maybe next year, though, innit? Won't be again this year, now because we've just spent all out, but... Like I said, I've enjoyed it. It's just... It just annoyed me that we haven't been able to spend time where we want. If you get me, folks. I definitely recommend it, though. 100%. If you, if you want to do it, do it. It ain't impossible. A lot of people think it is impossible to come here. Yeah? Just save your money at the end of the day, guys. And I'll just see you wherever we end up next. Guys, we're at the famous swimming pool. Just a quick pan for you. I get told I do it too quick and I have no this I do. So yeah, guys, that's the swimming pool. I'm about to go down the stairs and get some more photos of it. Wow guys, a basketball court, two times. <laughs> I don't know how to get down to the pool, I haven't got a clue. I take it's another floor. Yeah, we're confiscating that. Yeah. <laughs> we're keeping it. I can't go back, that's got to be detanonized. So guys, we basically at uh, Pripyat Cafe now. And it's only an hour till the trip is sadly over. I miss my fall and break my leg. Let me see. 
could we claim? Where there's a blend, there's a claim. Well, we're insured. Oh! Guys, it's uh, sinking. Amazing, that is absolutely stunning. So, basically, obviously, they wouldn't be able to take them boats out because they would have all been contaminated. So, they've just left them be as they are. Today, obviously, they've been there about, well, 30 years or more, probably. And as you can see in the distance, you can see the cranes as well. So we would have passed this earlier on the bus, guys. What's up, guys? We're currently in the car here, and there's some stunning stained glass windows in here, which you wouldn't normally see in a car here. You'd normally see it in a church. Which is really nice. You wouldn't, well, you wouldn't see our in a cafe like that anymore. Um, like I said, it's basically churches and other things, but stunning. Obviously, the nature took some of it away by the storms and the high winds have smashed it all and made it what it looks like today. <laughs> So we are in one of my favourite places in Chernobyl, the old school. And as you can see there's lots of creepy bits about old toys and whatnot. Cheers.